Let's talk about roofing. Comp shingle roofs, probably the most popular roof in North America. I would say it's pretty much everywhere. All right. <clears throat> so certain things we're required to inspect. We're required to inspect the roofing materials. So many people, I hear so many people say, well, we're required to walk the roof. Where does it say that? We're not required to walk the roof. We're required to inspect the roof. Okay. Inspect the materials, roof drainage systems, flashing, skylights, chimneys, and roof penetrations. It doesn't say we have to walk the roof. Now, I like to walk every roof possible because I think that's the best view, the best way to inspect it. Second best is a ladder at the eaves on a couple of places, especially the south side, where I can grab a hold of a shingle and see if I can pulverize it in my fingers, because that means you need a new roof. <laughs> so, but sometimes it's too steep. And I used to walk some pretty steep roofs. I used to do maybe some 812s. I'm not doing that anymore. Heck, a 612 is scary to me. <laughs> that, that's pretty steep. So a lot of times I won't walk them. But I can see a whole lot from a ladder at the eaves. We're also required to describe the roof materials. What is it? We don't have to figure out the brand. Just what's the generic name for that material? So asphalt shingles, some people call them composition shingles. Some people call them fiberglass shingles, you know, whatever. I, I think composition is probably more generically descriptive, but that depends upon what you want to want to call it. We also are required to report the methods used to inspect the roofing. And a lot of times this is missing from reports. It's important to protect yourself to describe the method used to inspect the roof. Ladder at the eaves. You know, I don't know, do you guys use drones? <clears throat> That's cool. A lot of us in San Diego don't use drones. There is so much military airspace. It's just, a lot of times your drone won't fly. It won't even lift off. We got to, yeah, I no, guess. <clears throat> yeah, we, we've got just so much restricted airspace because there's so many bases. What's that? Oh, here too. Yeah, I would imagine. So I don't use a drone. I have a, a camera pole. I like that too. That works pretty good. You know, of course, my preferred method is to get up on the roof or ladder at the eaves. Now, sometimes... I will get up, you know, we've got roofs, two-story homes where I can look out and see the first floor roof from the windows on the second floor. And maybe I'll extrapolate, depending upon what I see, assuming that the second floor roof is the same. Now, assuming is very dangerous as home inspectors because a couple of times, I've looked at the first level roof and it looks great. And I've done the two, the two level lift where you pull the ladder up and put it on the peak of the roof and go up on the other one, which I do not recommend, by the way. I know too many inspectors who've fallen doing that, so I don't do it anymore. <clears throat> and But I'd look up at the upper level and it's like a 40 year old roof. No, but they didn't replace it when they did the lower one. I've seen houses where they replaced the front and didn't replace the back. You guys ever seen that? It's like, really? <laughs> so you got to look close. And the camera pole works pretty good for that. You can usually get it up there to, to see what's going on. You just The trick is a very light camera. You don't want these big, heavy, expensive ones because like, whoa, you don't want to be doing that. So those work pretty good. <clears throat> I have seen... Uh, you know, drones and the pictures from drones, they seem to be pretty good too. So make sure to describe the method you used to inspect the roof because it's important to protect you. And also, if I can't get to something, 
I make sure I tell the client this area was inaccessible and there may be defects, right? There certainly could be defects. The same thing if there's branches covering the roof, you know, leaves and, and branches covering the roof. Heck, the, the likelihood of damage to the roof under the branch is pretty high because the branches move around when the wind blows. So there, there certainly could be damage there. So I'd recommend that the branches be removed and the roof be inspected for damage by a, a roofing contractor because most of the time there is some damage. All right. <clears throat> We are not required to walk roofs when it could damage the roof or it's unsafe. So you're not required to do it. I try to pretty much every time. It's kind of like, you know, when you drive away, if you don't walk on the roof, you kind of like feel like you missed something. It's kind of like if you, if you weren't able to open the electric panel, you know, there's so much information in there. You feel like you didn't see everything when you drive away and, and it's true. So I try to get up on every roof possible, but we're not required to do it. <clears throat> we're also not required to report on attached accessories. Satellite TV, antennas, solar equipment, any other type of antenna. The worst ones are the direct TV antennas where they drill, the, they just screw up right through. What the heck? And then when you tell when it's leaking, they'll say they're not responsible. They won't come fix it. How do they get away with that? I guess somebody needs to sue them, right? Question. Go ahead. Not required to re uh, report on them, uh, but mentioning that there are potential areas of leakage. Is that? I mean, yeah. Good question. You know, just because I'm not required to report something doesn't mean I walk by it. Nope, not required to do that with blinders on. Because, you know, if it's an obvious defect, I'm going to report it to my client and let them know. So, yeah, even though it's not a requirement, if there's something that's obvious, I'm still going to put it in the report. We also yeah. we also want to look for things that are on the roof that could, like, I've seen uh, roofers leave a bundle of shingles sitting on top of the oh roof. sure yeah or there's a tire sitting on a flat roof and you know we have to for liability reasons just right yeah stuff that's up on the roof garbage or or debris or spare parts or whatever it might be you know yeah yeah because they could fall off the roof i see a lot in california we see a lot of concrete tile roofs and sometimes the roofers will leave spare tiles up on the roof on the back side of the roof they'll just leave them up by the peak of the roof and it's funny, they'll start to creep down the roof because of building vibration or, or something. They start to creep down. And every once in a while, we find them in the shrubbery around the building. So that's never good. And then you think it's from the roof. You know, and you're looking around, and there's nothing missing. Like, what the heck? Where'd that come from? <clears throat> okay. We got, we got a question about solar panels. Do you... Um, sure. Do you, do you comment on those? Or um, come, can you comment about... The inspector's responsibility. Okay, so the question was about solar, um, solar electric. Most likely, we do see some solar hot water generation occasionally, but what's the, the inspector's responsibility? Well, we're not required to inspect any type of solar uh, energy generating equipment at all. Now, just because of that, doesn't mean I'm not going to say anything. If there's solar equipment on the roof, I'm going to tell my client that it's there <clears throat> and that we don't inspect it. And then I recommend that it be inspected by a solar energy expert. So I'll recommend inspection. I also recommend to my clients that they determine whether it's an owned system or a leased system. And if it's a leased system, you better read it because most of those leases are not favorable. So I'd recommend that they read it. And sometimes it ends up where they have to buy out or they it becomes a big problem between buyer and seller. So that can be an issue. Um, I do still see some hot water generating systems on roofs. I, you're probably not going to see them around here. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. We see them occasionally. Most of it's electricity generating. And like I said, we're not required to inspect them. But I still inform my client that it's there 
and recommend that it be inspected and inquire with the seller regarding, you know, is it owned or leased? And what are the, what are the you know, please read the lease and so on. So that's what I do. All right. So safety first. <clears throat> now you drive in here and you're going to inspect this house. Are you whipping out your ladder? And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be walking this roof. Now, the good news is the steeper the roof, the more I can see from the ground. So, and I do carry binoculars with me, which they work, it helps when looking at the roof from the ground, because I am definitely not walking this one. That's way too steep. Um, you know, I, I might, at the dormer here, if possible, I might kind of tweak out the screen a little bit so I can reach out and touch it. Just because I like to get a feel of the shingle itself, because sometimes it looks pretty good, but I can pulverize it with my fingers pretty easily. So I, I might've been thinking it was 10 years old. You know, now I'm thinking it's probably, you know, more than 15 or so. So some, I like to touch it. Yeah, you know, maybe that's just a personal thing. I don't know, but well, I just, you know, if I, if I can pul pulverize it, you know, it's bad. So anyway, I'm not walking that roof. And I'm going to tell my clients, I inspected it from the ground. <clears throat> you know, maybe I'll put a ladder up to the eaves. It depends upon how high it is in the back. I don't have a ladder with me that's tall enough to do that. Are you guys carrying like 20 foot, 22 foot ladders? Yeah. When you were younger. Yeah. <laughs> I used to carry a 28. Not anymore. I still have it. It only goes in the inspection wagon when I'm doing a commercial inspection. So not, not a home inspection. Display purposes. Yeah, there you go. Display purposes only was the comment. All right. <clears throat> so basically be safe. You know, every year I read about a home inspector who's either been killed or got hurt falling off a roof. I've already read about two this year. Roof falls. So it ain't worth it. Disclaim it. If it's not safe, don't go up there. Find out, find another method to inspect the roof or just say you couldn't get up there. Recommend a roofer. So we're not getting paid enough to get hurt. <clears throat> now, ladder safety. This is kind of funny because I can, I can tell you that, you know, okay, you're supposed to have your ladder on a firm level surface. Okay, got it. But this one here, the top should extend at least three feet above the surface so you have something to hold on to. Are you guys always observing that one? I know you're not. <laughs> I know you're not and set at the proper angle. How many of us have set it so steep that it's bouncing off the sidewall while you're going up? I mean, come on, I know you do it. <laughs> so try not to do that, not a good idea. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about roofs. The function of a roof, to shed water and protect the structure from damage. That's pretty much it. Get the water off the roof so it doesn't come in the house. That's really all it has to do. And we're going to talk about comp shingles. Most popular, I think, in, in North America, as I said earlier. All right. Organic shingles. Anybody remember organic shingles? They were the kind of thicker. Yeah, they were real heavy. Remember trying to carry the bundles? They were heavy shingles. They were maybe like that thick, almost quarter inch, some of them, I think. Those were the heavy ones. I remember when I was a kid, my dad re-shingling the garage roof, like, I don't know, 1969 or something, and carrying a bundle of shingles up. You know, that, that was, you, you were a man if you could do that. <laughs> so it was heavy stuff. But organic shingles pretty much aren't made anymore. They were like cardboard impregnated with with uh, asphalt uh, asphalt and even probably tar back then and then covered with uh, ceramic or stone granules 
and that's just a sunscreen. The granules are basically just to keep the sun off the asphalt. Of course, the rain comes along and washes them off. It exposes the asphalt, and that's how the roof ages. What we're going to see now are inorganic shingles, fiberglass mat. It's going to be a you know, polyester or fiberglass type matting, and then it's impregnated with asphalts. And then before it it hardens, they'll put the uh, uh, ceramic granules on. Like I said, the ceramic granules are really only there as a sunscreen. And the asphalt is what creates the weatherproof barrier and the granules stop the, or block some of the UV and also add color. People like color shingles. Some people like green, I've seen red, I've seen all kinds of different colors. So it just depends on personal preference. That's a basic shingle, comp shingle. <clears throat> So organic, I don't, I don't think there's any left. I really haven't seen an organic shingle roof in a long time. So I think they're gone. Maybe you'll find one on a barn somewhere, maybe on Hollis's shed. <laughs> yeah, they're usually, if you see one, they're going to be well-worn because it's going to be probably close to 40 years old maybe even older. So the edges will be clawing and you know it'll be in need of replacement. All right. <clears throat> so what affects performance? Obviously installation, flashings, drainage, getting water off the roof. One of my pet peeves is where they'll take a gutter and take all that tributary water from one roof and then put a downspout in and just dump it on the roof below, all in one focused location. So let, hey, let's put all the water right here and expect it to not leak. So that's a peeve of mine because it just, it focuses a whole bunch of water in one location. So I do recommend that that be changed to not direct all the water to one spot. It probably never gets fixed. Probably never, but you know what? I told you. So when the call, when it, when it leaks, I told you, right? Okay, maintenance of the roof. How many homeowners maintain their roofs? How many of you, you and you online too? How many? Of you, I got to make sure they know. I'm, I know you're there. <laughs> how many of you maintain your roofs? Oh, okay, about ten percent. I get green algae on the backside, and I spray wet and forget on it. You spray what on it? Wet and forget, spray and forget. You okay, that's the stuff with like the zinc in it or something, yeah. zinc oxide or whatever. Oh, that's sunscreen. <laughs> but no, I mean, I recommend, highly recommend it. Don't know what to do with it. You know, how do you set up it? How do you clean that? Okay, yeah, we're commenting about the, the algae growth on the roof. I, I know, and I've seen companies going around saying that they'll pressure wash your roof. Please don't recommend pressure washing the roof. That's never a good good idea. I've I've seen roofs that where they pressure washed them with the fan nozzle, and you can see, you you can see the pattern from the fan nozzle in the roof shingles. So that's not a good idea. Obviously, exposure to sun affects life expectancy and performance, and wind, snow, and hail. Now, my experience has been, if you if you put a, a three-tab comp roof, if you install it, let's say here, three-tab comp roof, <clears throat> you'll probably get 20 years out of it. You take that same roof and you put it in Florida, you'll get like 12. So it's, it's sun and rain. And combined together, the sun beats the heck out of the shingle. Rain comes along every other day washes off more granules, exposes more asphalt to the sun, beats it up some more, and then more granules wash off, and the roof doesn't last as long. Danny, your comment? I would add one more to that. How about the slope? Yes, steeper the slope lasts longer. Right. Yeah, steeper. Get the water off the roof quicker. The steeper slope does tend to last longer. So that's a good one. I'm gonna, I'll add that. What's that? Attic ventilation hasn't been proven to make the roof last longer. 
I didn't hear you. Why don't you use the, thank you. <laughs> Say it again. If it's not properly vented, does it shorten the life of the roof? It hasn't really been proven to shorten the life of the roof, except wood shingles. Danny, you had a comment? To, to add to his, I would, um, as far as the um, ventilation, I think that may have been more to the old organic shingles. I don't think this is more than Yeah, it probably may. <clears throat> yeah, it may have made a difference with the organics. The problem is, you know, roof vent or excuse me, attic ventilation is wonderful. We need it to help get rid of the heat. However, you know, the radiant heat in the attic is still going to keep it about 140 degrees. It's going to be hot regardless of ventilation or not because of radiant heat that's get coming from the sun in the summertime. You guys all know that. In the attics in the summertime, the air temperature is what? Like 120, 140? Yes. It, it's the same in San Diego because of the, it's not because of ventilation. It's because of radiant heat. The sun just heats up the attic. Yeah. Reflective membranes underneath of the roof decking uh, transport a lot of heat back through the roof decking. Yes. So it gets cooked once coming through and then once going back. Okay. Yeah. Radiant barriers. They may put, you know, add to, to, they may lessen the life expectancy of the roof, but frankly, I've read some studies about it where it hasn't really made a big difference. So, but we'll see. You know, we'll say I, I'm just seeing where radiant barriers are starting to be used a lot more. So maybe we'll learn some more over the years as we test all this stuff in people's houses. Anybody else? Question? Okay. All right. <clears throat> do dimensional shingles perform better than three tab shingles? Yes, they do. Because they're typically thicker. So they're going to perform better. They also cost more. They don't have tabs, little pieces to blow off typically. Three tab shingles are just that. They've got those tabs, sometimes you know, about that wide. And between them, you've got keyways where a lot of water flows and causes wear and tear. So the keyway or the uh, tabs come loose. And you'll see on comp shingle roofs a lot of times, three tab, where the the tab itself is broken off and blown away. That's pretty common. It doesn't happen with the dimensionals. <clears throat> so it doesn't have tabs or things like that or keyways for junk to hang up on, basically. Also uses more nails. Typically, a dimensional shingle requires at least four nails. Depending upon slope or and or wind, expected in the area you might need more usually near the coast who they live by the coast in maryland no well you're going to get high wind by the coast so you have to put more or you're supposed to put more nails in the shingles how many will peel it back and look at the number of nails anybody yeah usually you're going to break it probably not a good idea unless it's a new roof you could do it <clears throat> and some insurance companies, when they're paying for a new roof, they want to see dimensional or laminated shingles installed rather than three tab because they perform better. They don't want to pay for another roof, especially if you've got you know hail damage or wind damage. The likelihood of it happening again is pretty high, right? If you live in an area that got it once, you're probably going to get it again. What do you think? Those are dimensional shingles. Not real expensive ones. They got a little shadow effect here. A little bit of shadow. Here's your ridge cap. Look pretty good. Got lead flashing. Is it is it correct to call that style architectural or is that strictly dimensional, that style? <clears throat> I call it dimensional. Architectural kind of covers everything with a little with a profile. You know, it gives it a little bit more reveal, so it has more shadow effect. But shingles are always trying to look like something else. 
So, you know, they they try to make them look like wood or something is what the shadow line is for. Give it some some depth. So it has some kind of a you know architectural detail. That's why they call them architectural shingles, not because an architect came up with it. It's architectural uh, detail, you know, effect. So that you get a little bit more shadow to it or whatever it might be to make it look different. Can you touch briefly on roof overs and staples versus other fasteners? We will. Yes. And staples are no 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 anymore. <laughs> and roof overs, we'll talk about that too. All right. So pretty typical laminated shingle. Here's the parts. We got ridge cap up top. Ridge vent is very common. Now, most ridge vents are retrofit. The first roof didn't have a ridge vent. So make sure you look in the attic to see that they actually cut the, yeah, actually cut the plywood back. Because probably 30% of the time, when I go in the attic on a house with a recent re-roof with a ridge vent, they never cut back the OSB or the plywood. So it, it's just up there looking pretty. Or, or not cut back enough. So yeah, or it's just, yeah, like that much, right. So make sure they cut it back. So you got to look up in the attic. And, and remember when you get there, I typically do the attic is one of the last things that I do. But I typically look in the attic before I go on the roof. I know you're looking at me, what? <laughs> Here's why. A lot of times when I look in the attic, there's no reason to go up on the roof <laughs> because there's evidence of leakage. There's deteriorated sheathing. There's something wrong that I see from the attic. And I always like to tell this story. When I was young <laughs> and a beginner inspector, around 30 years old, I am... Um, I used to jump on the roof for, I get to the inspection early, you know, and I'd bring my ladder up and I'd, you know, knock on the door, nobody's home, cool. You know, and I'd get to work on the outside and I'd flip my ladder up and go up on the roof. Well, I was inspecting a house with a, had a gravel roof, about yay slope, maybe one and a half or two twelve slope, gravel, you know, built up roof with gravel. I get up, I'm walking on it, walking over to the chimney. And I get close to the chimney and I stepped on it. My foot went through the plywood, through the roof. The, the plywood, you know, it was an older house, so it had plywood. It was rotted through because of leakage at the chimney flashing. So my foot went into the attic. And so I go, I pull my foot back out and my shoe comes off. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So my shoe comes off and it's down in the attic. <laughs> and it's too far for me to reach because I'm, I'm, you know, near the middle. I'm like, great. <laughs> and of course, being a beginner, I didn't know that you should have spare shoes with you. <laughs> so the re real estate agent gets there to let me in. You know, I got one shoe. <laughs> I'm looking pretty cool. <laughs> so I told her what happened. I said, the roof is, you know, all rotted out around the, the chimney. And I, I was walking up to it and, you know, I stepped through it. So it's going to leak worse than it's leaking now. Okay. I made that very clear. <laughs> worse than it's leaking now. And I'd recommend that, you know, get a roofer out or somebody to tarp it or you know, whatever. She's like, okay. <clears throat> so I got that handled. You know, I wasn't blamed for the hole in the roof, but I still had to retrieve my shoe because I had you know, another inspection that day and wasn't smart enough to have spare shoes with me or spare complete wardrobe, actually. <laughs> so I get, I find the attic access hole and my shoe's like way over there. <laughs> so I go down in the garage and there was, there was, a, I think there was a hoe and there was a rake and some other stuff. Well, I had a roll of duct tape in my car and I duct taped a rake <laughs> to a broom, the handle, to get it long enough to get it up into the attic and pull my shoe over to the to where I could retrieve it. 
and uh, put that shoe on for the rest of the day. So what I learned from that? Many things. <laughs> Number one, bring spare clothes and shoes. <laughs> Number two, look in the attic first. Because when I got in the attic and was looking around the chimney, you could see there was, you know, white fuzz and, and rot and, you know, dark discoloration and stains in the ceiling. It was pretty clear the roof was been leaking for a long time. So just be careful. That's the reason I go in the attic first before I go on the roof, typically. Unless I'm trying to beat rain or something like that, I typically will go in the attic first. All right. So here's our pieces. You guys know all this stuff anyway. Laminated shingles are just that. They're two pieces glued together. That's a laminated shingle. Two pieces of composition shingle glued together. <clears throat> but notice they're all one piece and the tabs are glued down typically. And there's our seal line right here. By the way, it is not a requirement to pull the cellophane off of the seal line to get it to work. I've seen that in reports. I've actually seen inspectors say you have to do that. And that's not true. Now, well, I shouldn't say that. Every once in a while, depending upon the brand, it's true. Depending upon the slope. If the real steep, like 12-12 slope, sometimes you have to add extra nails and do some other odd stuff. But this is a typical laminated shingle. Four nails. Approximately in these locations. Now, depending upon wind load, it might require six nails. Just depends. But I think pretty much for, you know, around here, away from the, the ocean, it's going to be four nails, typically. I don't peel them back usually to look. Once in a while, maybe. Um, if I see a shingle that's skewed and looks like it's not fastened, then I might look or I'll yank on the shingle. And if it pulls out, obviously it's got no nails. I've seen that before. And I recommend that the entire roof be inspected by a licensed roofer and fastened as appropriate for the shingle. And it should be nailed. Okay, no staples anymore. I think it, the staples were only allowed for maybe five, 10 years in the IRC. And they were required to be parallel with the shingle, not perpendicular, parallel. But the problem with staples is they pull through, they pull out. So no staples allowed anymore. <clears throat> All right. Installation. I look at the courses and the rows of shingles. Do they look like they're straight? Are things all crooked, like it was beer Sunday? <laughs> I've seen that. Does it look to be professional? <clears throat> Most of the time, it just depends. How does the surface look? Is it smooth or does it look like there's five layers of shingles under it? I've seen it. I've seen five layers of shingles, comp shingles. Really? And I got up in the attic and the roof rafters, some of them had already split. It was an old like 1930s house and the rafters were two by fours and they were bending and a couple of them were broken. Amazing. That's a lot of weight. Just think about the weight of five or six layers of roofing, even three. So I know where I live, you're allowed to go two layers, two layers with three tab. Dimensional shingles, mm -mm. it's too irregular. You got to pull them off. So three tab, you can go two layers. You can also install three tab or laminated shingles over top of wood shingles. We're allowed to do that, which is amazing. <laughs> What's that? Not recommended. Not recommended, but it's allowed to do it, at least in the West Coast. I don't know about here, maybe. 
I ahead, think when you're, you're doing shingles over shingles, like the three tab, you will have some manufacturers who will avoid the warranty if you're, oh, yeah. if you're putting the shingle on top of even their own old product. Right. Yep. Yeah. Most of they're getting smart and they won't, they won't warranty it. So I, I always recommend a complete tear off each time. If it's multiple layers, I do note multiple layers and I'd let my clients know that this may, you know, reduce the life expectancy or expected useful life of the second layer because it's an irregular surface, which causes more sun damage. When you get, when you start bending the shingles, you expose more asphalt to the sun. So it does cause it to age a little bit quicker. All right. <clears throat> you can always go to manufacturer specs. And the place to get that, because I'm not going to try to figure out whose brand of shingle it is. It, it's not on the back. <laughs> you know, it's going to be hard to find unless you really, you have a lot of experience with shingles. You can maybe visually recognize it, but there's the asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association, ARMA. They have uh, uh, oh, consensual standards that all the manufacturers agree on, and that's in that book. They have an installation guide. You can get it for free. You just go to the, go to the internet and search Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association, and there's what, what they call a consensus manual, kind of like the brick, the stone veneer companies have done with uh, their manual for installation. Same thing with Arma. If you want to, if you want to need something for a, a, an authoritative document, you guys never get questioned on your opinions, right? <laughs> it just sometimes you have to have an authoritative document to back up what you're going to say in a report. I get questioned. like. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> no, I don't say. <clears throat> but you know, whenever I write something, I always think, gosh, could I could I back that up if I had to? So you, knowing the sources like Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association, um, you know, the the Brick Masonry Institute and all these other things that we can use if we have to back something up, it's always a good resource. All right. <clears throat> low slope shingles. So basically, less than 412 down to 212 is allowed for comp shingles as long as there's double underlayment or some kind of a membrane. Like ice and water shield, sticky back stuff underneath the whole roof. Who's going to verify that? I don't know. I see it all the time on uh, patio covers where they'll take, you know, the comp shingles and they're at like a 512 and then all of a sudden it's like this. Now, it, I understand because it, it looks, you know, uniform and everything looks the same. The problem is the shingles on that low slope area are not going to be watertight because the shingles depend upon the slope of the roof to get the water off the roof as quick as possible so they remain watertight. They're not waterproof. Shingles are water shedding, not waterproof. So they need to have slope or something else underneath it that'll act as the roof and basically the shingles become decorative. So you can have membrane, below or double underlayment, which I can't see either one. So I'm gonna note it too low of a slope unless there is a membrane, recommend that that be verified by licensed roofing contractor, blah, blah, blah. I'm guessing it's probably not there. Sometimes if you put a ladder at the rake side, you can get, and you can look, you can kind of peel it up a little bit and look and it's never there. But you know, you gotta give them the benefit of the doubt, right? No. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> defects with roofing. Two types of defects. Probably the most common, installation. The next one is going to be deterioration because of aging. And 
we're required per the standards of practice to tell our clients systems or components which are nearing or at the end of their useful life, correct? Okay, so to do that, you have to be pretty good at guessing the age of the roof. I'm not saying we have to put it in the report. You're not required to age the roof. However, if it looks like it's worn and nearing or at or beyond the end of its useful service life, is that reportable? Of course it is. Yeah, we should be telling our clients. So, you know, I don't say in the report, you should get five years out of this roof. I'm never going to say that. Am I going to say that the roof is 12 years old and should be good for another eight years? Anybody here going to say? <laughs> I know it's funny, but I see it in reports. How about approximates? How about a what? Approximates. Uh... I'm not going to say yeses, but approximate. Uh, you know, you could do, if you want to do approximate, I would suggest a range. You know, roof appeared to be, you know, 12 to 15 years old. Average life expectancy of this type of roof with proper maintenance is, is 15 to 20 years. How's that? That's a little better. Never give an absolute. Well, because you can't. I can't. I can't tell you that roof is going to fail in four years, three months, two days. I can't, I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't, I guess I could, you know, I could try. And then they, they'll just forget, hopefully, right? No, they'll pull that report out. <laughs> Remember you inspected my home five years ago. <laughs> you ever get those? How about 10 years ago? Anybody? I know. How many have done the same house like four times? Amazing. And the same stuff's wrong. <laughs> they might have a new roof. It's got a new roof. Oh, that could, well, it, it was not existing when you were there last time. Come on, have some more confidence. Yeah, I inspected a house that I had framed 10 years earlier. That's a conflict of interest. I, I, could, I disclosed it. Okay, that's I good. disclosed. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, here's another thing I, I don't do. How many have been called to inspect the house next door? No? Yeah. Did you decline? Oh, you didn't? Wow. I said, eh, you know, I, I don't think so. You know, just in case. You never know what's going to happen. I said, eh, you know, I'll recommend somebody for you. You're going to be my neighbor. I inspected the house next to Seth's, and he stole my agent. <laughs> He stole your agent. He stole my agent. What do you own him? <laughs> <laughs> Up to then, yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's look at some installation defects. Ridge vent. You got to use long nails, or it's not going to hit the sheathing below. So look closely at him. You can see here that's the end of the nail right there. Not quite long enough. So the same nail that's being used for the shingle should not be being used for the ridge cap because it's not long enough to get into the sheathing. So this is pretty common. Anybody seen this? Yeah, it's very common. Overexposed. Now dimensional shingles, maximum exposure is five and five eighths inches. Don't ask me how they came up with that one but it's five and five eighths. And what are we showing here? A little over six, six and a quarter. That's stretching. They're stretching the courses to try to save maybe a bundle of shingles. So it's not good. So the roof is not, the expected useful life now of this roof is gonna be less than normal because it's improperly installed. And you can see it when you when you look at the root, you can see it right here. That's stretched. Everybody see it? It's supposed to be five and five eighths maximum exposure. And you can see right here, we got, I don't know, six, a little more than six, maybe. For two of them, we got a foot. That's that's a little more than five eighths. 
five and five eighths plus five and five eighths. <laughs> so incorrect. <clears throat> now, the only reason the tape measure is there is to verify. You know, people say, well, they won't believe you. You know, some roofer will say, no, no, we put it in right. So while I'm there, I make sure I get the evidence and I take a picture so that if somebody questions, I have the picture. Many times I'll put it in the report. You know, the roof, the, the exposure of the shingles was more than allowed by the, the manufacturer. This will reduce the expected useful life. Yeah. That's strictly for three time uh, architectural. That's for the uh, uh, laminated shingles. So uh, same same is true for uh, dimensional shingles. Yes. All right. Now this is a scan of the pictures that are right on the bundle. This is what comes with a bundle of shingles. And it tells you where the nails go. Right here. This is for laminated shingles. The nails go pretty much right here. Okay, this is your exposure, five and five eighths. The nails go up here at about six, six inches or so, right here. So that's what comes, that's what's on the bundle of shingles, if you look at the package. <clears throat> what's that? Of course. Yeah, okay, now. This one, those are staples, which are no longer allowed. Staples no longer allowed. But if you can see the fastener, that's definitely incorrect. You should not be able to see the fastener. So, but staples no longer allowed. And that is the position they're required to be in. It's parallel to the shingle, not perpendicular. If you do see them, but they, they haven't been allowed in, gosh, 10 or 15 years, I think now. What's that? Every yeah, maybe more. I know, time goes a lot faster than you think. I always say something, well, we did that like five years ago. My wife's like, no, no. that was like 20. <laughs> like, really? Have I known you that long? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> now this, right here, like a little bird mouth because the shingle's a little bit skewed. What do you think? Is, eh, maybe there's nails missing? If there's just one of those, you gonna report it? Eh. I, you know, this whole roof, I'm gonna recommend it be inspected. Here, here's the point I'm trying to make. I don't get into reporting a whole, or cataloging a whole bunch of little defects. If I find something wrong, like these fasteners are exposed. There's a like a bird's mouth or something. I'm going to recommend that the entire roof be inspected by a licensed roofing contractor. Corrections be made as necessary to assure that the roof is watertight and will last its its uh, its expected useful life. And I'm done. Because if I cat if I catalog every little defect, like six different things, you know what's going to happen. What? There'll be a seventh and eighth thing wrong. Plus, what's going to happen is the roofer will get that page of the report, just fix this. That's what's going to happen. But the, I know there's going to be more wrong. If I'm seeing this, an expert's going to find more. So there's a potential for more defects. So I, I don't make it an absolute that there's, hey, there's just on the south side, there was two exposed fasteners. No, there's more. There's definitely more. So I, I get tell them to get an expert to inspect the entire roof, correct as necessary to assure that it's watertight. Because you know there's going to be more. And you know what? Even if you list six in your report, the roofer is going to find another 10 just to make you look bad. <laughs> right? Some of them. Some of them will. Let them figure it out. Bob. Um, in when I'm teaching, I say, what's the number that comes after two? A hundred. 
many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it goes one, two, many. Many locations. And yeah. One exactly. or more than many. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to catalog every single location of a defect because there's always going to be more than you're seeing. You're not spending an hour looking at the roof, are you? I don't think so. What do we spent? 10 minutes? Maybe? Walking around looking? I don't know, 15? Depends upon the size of the roof, but the typical couple thousand square foot house, that's pretty quick up on the roof. How about roof to wall flashings? This is another place we find a lot of defects because right here, they took this aluminum flashing and nailed it through the stucco and then glued the top of it. There you go. That's not proper. I call that a temporary repair. That's what I called it. Recommend contact the roofing contractor to properly install that flashing. Same roof, by the way. <clears throat> what do you think? Yeah, I know. That's that's definitely a strong roof. Hopefully, there's no broken rafters inside. Well, here's here's another reason I look in the attic first, like that house where they had like this many layers, and I was up in the attic and I could see where the rafters had had two of them were broken. Of course, near the chimney. You know, I probably would have walked on it and maybe had a had an issue. So that roof, I never even went on. Yeah. Does the weight of all these uh, shingles affect the structure of the roof? Absolutely. The roof is designed, you know, this is an old house. <clears throat> so this roof was probably designed for, you know, one layer of shingles plus snow load. And, and that's about it. So now it's got, one, two, three, but at least four layers of shingle, maybe more. You know, I'm counting starter. So at least four layers, maybe more, of shingles, plus potential for snow load, depending upon where it is. And you know how long the nails would have to be for that that time? <laughs> yeah, you're going to need like, like two and a half, half inch nails to get that to work properly, to actually hit sheathing with uh, your fasteners for that upper layer of roofing. So definitely improper, too many roofs. I'm gonna recommend a complete tear off. Oh, and by the way, some of those roofs might be pre-1980 and maybe asbestos containing. Who knows, could be. So you, know, you may have asbestos containing materials now buried in there, which would require you know, hazmat protocol for removal. I know, it's like, oh! <laughs> well, that age of house could be anywhere anyway. You know, pre-1980. I know a lot of people use 78, I use 1980. Because the stuff that we had warehoused, we were allowed to use it. What's that? We didn't throw it all away. No, we used it. I know. <laughs> we didn't throw it away. What? Yeah, well, we didn't do that, but we had, you know, we used to get the asbestos uh, in bags that you'd mix with water to put on the steam pipes. I know, great, huh? Great stuff. <laughs> we had bags of it in the in the shop. We threw some away, but some of it we used. It probably still there today. <laughs> it works. Asbestos is great. Yeah, you just don't want to breathe it. You know, it's people ask, well, how do you know if it's asbestos? I just, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't do that. That's 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 not funny. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now this material, this is a specific manufacturer defect, although you don't want to say that in the report because people will think that they're going to get new material for free. That is not true. And don't say it was recalled either, because some people think that they get stuff for free if it's a recall. That's not true. Most of the time, the money's gone. 
when there's a lawsuit over roofing materials or other construction materials, you know who gets paid first? Of course the lawyers get paid first. And then there's like $14 each for all the other claimants. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know why that we even allow this kind of stuff to happen. All right. So this material was called Dura Ridge. A good name for it. <laughs> and this material would fail prematurely. The field of the roof would be great and in wonderful shape. However, the ridge cap made by Dura Ridge would completely fail after about 10 years. So we saw this stuff a lot <clears throat> and most people would just pay a roofer to replace it. That's all. But that's a typical manufacturing defect. I just say it was significantly deteriorated. It needs to be replaced. You know, I don't know what caused it. That's a metal valley, which is probably the right way to do it. Although we see a lot of weave together valleys, it's pretty common. Metal valley works. And this is just kind of a dumb one because you have this, this little change in elevation of the roof right here, about a foot, and they made a valley. It's like, why did you even bother doing that? You know, it's just kind of a, it, it's a sensitive area now that didn't need to be there. And we've got, here, let me just back up one sec here. Back up. <clears throat> Come on. Okay. Plus, the problem here is which way do you put the shingle in? Do you go this way? Does the shingle go perpendicular to the flashing or parallel? Well, I mean, come on. Take a look at it. What are you going to do? And what do they do here? Yeah, it looks like it's it's the wrong way. So that was a question on that. You know, I think the shingles, I, I don't know, you're probably better off using a piece of like rolled roofing or something there. I, I don't know. It just didn't seem right. And this, you've got some lifting of the shingle. That's going to allow water to get underneath even more. So I recommend it be checked by a roofer and reconfigured as necessary to assure that that condition is waterproof. What do you think? Let the roofer figure it out. That's not my job to figure it out. It did. The flashing went to the peak. Oh, you're talking about all the way up over here? No, that's a 16 inch. That's standard size. I know how much that is. It's 16 inches from the middle to the end of it. So maybe it gets up there. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Um, we go back to the, the Metal Valley. Who here is actually lifting the the tab at the end to make sure they cut the tip off of the, yeah. off the Oh, do that little that forty five yeah. right. on the yeah. Um, I've seen water run out of a out of a roof fifteen feet away. Oh, because it got underneath. It comes and ran right across the shingles. You're talking about at the end of it at where you're end. supposed to cut them out of forty five. Correct. Yeah. I look it for the, it. it. You know, it'll show it in the manufacturer's, you know, installation right. guidelines. Yeah, the the last shingles at the end at the at the eve end of the valley are supposed to be cut on a forty five. Anybody seeing that? It's supposed to be there. It's pretty rare to see it actually. It's really you could bring some snips with you and just fix it. <laughs> All right. That obviously is bad. <clears throat> now, how about this? Now, you can see where it looks like there was maybe a flashing installed here, a counter flashing. But this one, here's your new. And it's aluminum. And that is silicone. It's caulk. It's caulk to the bricks. What do you think? Temporary. I call it temporary flashing and recommend that it be permanently installed by a licensed roofer. <clears throat> what do you think? That just looks rough. I mean, it just, I would just recommend it be fixed just because it's ugly. 
I'm not quite sure what that is. Yeah, here's more overexposed. And you can see that's a fastener and that's a fastener right there and there. And they tried to hide it and they're covering them up with a little bit of cement. I'm like, I see you. <laughs> so it's incorrect, overexposed. More than five and five eighths. Also, edge offset. But you never thought about this. With laminated shingles, there's a minimum edge offset of four inches. So that is an edge right there. And that is an edge right there. And there should be minimum four inches. Anybody ever thought about measuring that? I know this is probably getting a little too detailed. But in this condition, it was I could see it standing up, looking at the room. I was like, well, that's wrong. And so let's prove it up. Let's measure it and show that it was only three and see if I could find any more. If there's one, there's probably more in the whole, in the whole course. So that may reduce the life expectancy. The manufacturer's installation instructions require a four inch offset in the edges. And here's what's written on the, on the bundles. All right. <clears throat> How many have heard of a pleak shingles? Anybody? No? Okay, that's when they glue this little tab on right here. This is a typical laminated shingle, but this isn't a pleak. They're trying to make it look like one of these, but a cheaper manufacturing process. And that's what it looks like in the field. And that tab is not reinforced. These tabs are just glued on. And for some reason, the granules seem to wash off them a lot quicker than normal. So, <clears throat> Not knowing the brand of the roof or anything like that. I think it's Atlas. If you saw this, the roof looks worn, right? It looks like you're missing granules. That's enough to report. I'd recommend a roofer evaluate that roof because it looks like we've got granules. You see? A lot of the fiberglass mat is showing through. Look at right here. That's a lot. That's a lot of exposed asphalt where there should be granules. Yeah. Where in the hell are you finding all these roofers that know stuff and know how to fix stuff? <laughs> you yeah. keep recommending them. Well, I recommend a roofer is, <laughs> is probably going to replace the roof. And actually, I have good referrals to decent roofers. Not in Maryland, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you can find somebody. <clears throat> or no? Is it that hard? Wow. Anyway. I mean, you don't want to, what are you going to say? Replace the roof? Yeah. We can't. I mean, I'd be okay with saying that. But you're going to recommend a licensed roofing contractor, right? You can do it yourself, Jim? I didn't think so. We're too old for that. Here's some more. Anyway, moving on. All right, so we have to get good at judging the age of the roof. So this one, typical three-tab shingle roof. What do you think? You think? 15 to 20? Yep, that's, I'd say about 15 to 20. So, nearing the end of its useful life. Agree? There you go. That's really all we have to say, is nearing the end of its useful life. You could say 15 to 20 if you want to, but that's not a requirement. Budget to replace, when? How about at any time? <laughs> May require replacement in the next zero to five years. Do you, do you ever say at or nearing the end of its useful life? Yes. 
Yeah. Beyond. I've said beyond. beyond. Right. <clears throat> sure. It depends upon what it looks like. All right. Layers of shingles. One recommended. Two layers is allowed by IRC. Don't recommend it. Three or more layers, not allowed. It's definitely a, a significant defect. And I look at the rake. It's usually a lot easier to count it at the rake. And I just say approximately, you know, it could be approximately four to six. Dep you know, depends, whatever I'm seeing. One to three or, you know, I don't know. Whatever it is you, see, you think you're looking at. All right, other things we're looking at. Shingles that are absent, cracked, curled, visible fibers, the, the actual matrix starting to show through because of deterioration, damage, granule loss, uh, stiff, you know, where they're, they're easily pulverized by hand. Should always report that. Now, how about this one? And this is where it gets a little bit more difficult because as a home inspector, I'm not going up there. And I see lifted shingle here and probably some more up here. And I bet there's more than these two locations. So what's that? More, um, right? More. Um, I was going to say, if you're putting your ladder up on the roof and you have any questions about it, look down into the gutter mm -hmm. because sometimes the gutter will be full a of sand. Right. I'm done. I don't a lot, Well, to... many times it's right at the bottom of the downspout. There's a whole pile of it there. So granule wash off is normal. That's the normal aging process. And as the roof gets to be nearing the end of its useful life, most of the granules are gone and they're hanging out in the gutter or wherever. So that means it's time for a new roof. But this one here, I'm gonna, well, no, that needs some work. It needs a repair. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to say there was two locations where there were lifted shingles. I'm going to say there were lifted shingles observed on the roof, recommend a roofing contractor inspect the entire roof, repair shingles as necessary to assure that the system is watertight. What do you think? Because if I identify just the two locations, that's all they're going to fix. Or somebody's going to get up there and say, well, gee, you missed all the other 10. Stupid home inspector. <laughs> you had three hours to look at the roof. What were you doing? Right? Obviously a problem. Shingle blow off. Most likely improper nailing. But maybe not. Could just been high wind. Time for repairs. And there could be other defects. Yes. I've also, it seems like every time I've told a person that the roof needs repair, get the roofer to come out and repair whatever needs to be repaired. Right. The roofer shows up and says, you need a new roof. Of course. Not a repair. <clears throat> that home inspector should have told you you need a whole new roof. Oh, of course. Well, you know what? It's getting harder and harder to find roofers who will do just a repair because they don't want to guarantee it. The big job of repair of replacing the roof, they of don't course. want a repair job. Right. Yeah. So my recommendation is to say repair slash replacement. Let them figure it out. Not my problem. So these repair slash replacement. And you know, and that's probably true in some cases. It depends upon, you know, if that thing is 18 years old, you're probably better off just replacing it because you know it's gonna other shingles are gonna blow off pretty soon. How about that one? That's probably at the end of its useful life. What do you think? Time for a new roof. I think we saw that one. Okay, now look at this one because you want to look at the keyways. You want to look here at that keyway and up here and here. Those are like little gorges. That's where the water, you get a lot of water runs there. And that's where the, the granule wash off occurs first. If you look at the tabs, the tabs are pretty good compared to the keyway. The keyway is pretty beat up. So what are you thinking? Time for a new one? I am. Even though the, 
the tab is pretty good, although it kind of broke off a piece here and it was easily pulverized in my fingers. That's never good. That's time for a new one. Getting there. Look at the keyways. Do the keyway right here, right there. Keyway's pretty beat up. So time for a new one. Look at the granule wash off on this. That's pretty much the entire felt matrix showing through there. Like we yeah. have communities and, and random houses in this area that that horizon shingle by certainty. Okay. Um, do you have a standard statement or something that you use when you see that since it was a taken out of production product? Yeah. Are you sure what, what you're looking at? Yeah, because I mean with this with the horizon shingle, it's stamped to look like a dimensional shingle. Right. But it's a three tab. Right. And you see the spider cracking and the aggressive granular loss. Yeah, you know, I'm not certain you say they stand behind it. But I always mention it in my reports because who stands it, behind it? Certainty apparently says they stand behind the the, the expected life of twenty years. Right, shingles. and you know what you know what that means? You could buy new shingles at a prorated price, depending upon how long the right. horizon shingle lasted, and they'll dump them in your driveway. And you have right? to get and you got to get somebody to fix it. Okay, so that's pretty much useless. So you know, I just say it's going to need to be replaced. Okay. I don't care who's, and you know, I try to stay away from naming the brand because I could be wrong. I mean, you could be pretty sure, but I, <clears throat> yeah, you, you could, I guess, you know, or it was likely the Horizon brand and they tend to, you know, age, they, they haven't met or they're, they're notorious for not meeting expected useful life <laughs> or something like that. Mm -hmm. And recommend roofer, I guess, is the way to approach it. It's kind of like those Atlas ones. You know, they fail prematurely, too. And you can get, actually, in that case, I don't think you can get new ones from the manufacturer. So that's just a replacement. But, you know, it doesn't really matter to the client. All the client wants to know is what's wrong. Second question, who's paying for it? And that's not our problem. So what's wrong? It doesn't matter who made it. You know, I'm just going to rec recommend a roofer come out. And determine what needs to be done to make it correct. And probably it's going to be a new roof. All right. So here we have a lot of the felt matrix showing through. That's aged. Keyways, once again, look close at the keyways. Time for a new one. What do you think? Pretty beat up. <clears throat> Sometimes the tabs will break off and people glue them back on. That happens occasionally. That doesn't even sound like me. <laughs> Let me know when we're good. I think he's got it. Okay, good. Time for a new one. You know, the, the, here's the thing you get too, though, is people will say, it doesn't leak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's just, you know, that's part of our inspection. And, and frankly, if it's not raining the day that we're inspecting, how can we check for leaks? Right, we're looking for historical staining. We're looking for wear and tear that likely will lead to leaks. We're also looking for wear and tear that we know is going to lead to the requirement for a new roof in the very near future. So this roof, <clears throat> I would say, is beyond its expected useful life. What do you think? It's time for a new roof yesterday. Certainty. Yes, certainty. <laughs> that poor guy. You, you, you got like a vendetta, Jim, against certainty, huh? Hey Mike, what yeah. I what I will if I get the response from somebody, but it's not leaking. I, my response to them is, well, those bald tires on your car are still holding air. But how yeah. long you can ride on those? Right. You know. It, yeah, yeah. Analogies are good. You know, when people when you say the or when people say it doesn't leak, 
you know, or they ask, you know, was it leaking? Well, how many times is it raining during an inspection? Maybe 10% of the time? Not even? Yeah, for me, it's probably 2% of the time. So it's not very often. Yeah. Insurance companies. Okay, insurance companies. And that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. That's becoming a big problem <clears throat> for homeowners and inspectors. And I think, you know, frankly, I think some of it is fraud by the insurance companies. I don't think they should be allowed to bind coverage on a house without seeing it. And then three months later, send you a letter that says, oh, we looked at your house. We're going to cancel your policy in 30 days if you don't replace your roof. Now, I want to, you need to go look at it now before I buy it. <clears throat> well, is that fair? I don't think that's fair. So I, hopefully something will happen soon about that. I think there's some rumblings that something's going to happen about that. But that's what's occurring is the the insurance companies will send out an adjuster or somebody, to, an independent person to look at the house that they bound coverage on three or four months ago. And then they come up with a list. And a lot of times it's a list of stupid stuff. You know, because the, even I saw one, the roof was discolored. It was like lichen or something on it. It was stained. And they wanted the roof replaced. And it was like only five years old. So... You know, that's the kind of stuff happens. They said people bought the house and a week later doing something wrong. So the granules in the gutter. Well, the, the child, right. And the comment was, yeah, the insurance company sent somebody out and said they found granules in the gutter. Well, you're always going to find them when it's a comp roof. That's normal. So, yeah, sometimes it's unqualified people going out, but it's something we have to deal with. And you should also make sure that your contract and your report says that you do not inspect. It does not determine whether the property is insurable or not. It's not, well, the, actually the standards of practice say we don't have to inspect for that, but it should be in your contract and your report too. We're not determining whether the property is insurable. That's a separate, we don't work for them. <clears throat> so we don't know if they're going to cover it. Okay. Now this one, this one is an interesting one. Old roof. Now, the damaged area here, that was covered by a tree branch when the inspector was at the property. So this all covered with tree branch. And the inspector said, I can't see that area. There may be hidden damage. <clears throat> recommend the tree branch be cut back and the property be reinspected. They actually did it. So remember when there's a branch on the roof, the wind blows it around and it's always it's sweeping the roof all the time. So it's causing this damage. Now the roof was old. You know, the rest of the roof looked, it was, you know, 15, 20, you know, getting close. But this now, I mean, that's a pretty that's a big area of damage. You might as well just replace the roof now. So I always recommended that area be inspected that was not visible because there could be hidden damage. And actually there's a high likelihood of hidden damage because the branches, they move around. <clears throat> I think this was some kind of a manufacturing defect. Of course, you're not gonna get it free shingles or anything, you know, it's, you're buying it. So the roof needs to be replaced. That, that's bottom line, you need a new roof. But you can see the pattern where, you know, one bundle was good and these bundles were bad. Couldn't you just replace the bad ones? You could, go for it. <laughs> sure, you can replace the bad ones, have fun with that. <clears throat> That'd be a good project for you for a couple of weekends. <laughs> Have at it. Okay. Now this close up, look at the keyways. No granules, pretty much 100% granule wash off in the keyways. And then if you grab a little piece of it right here, you can see where it grabbed a piece and it was easily pulverized by hand. So this is time for roof replacement. Everybody agree? 
Time for a new one. It's at or beyond useful life expectancy. Time for a new one. Okay, hail damage. That happens. Happens around here. I know, I had a house in Haymarket that had hail damage. And we bought that house and the homeowners, actually I knew about it, the homeowners had already gotten the insurance settlement for it and they didn't spend it on the roof. <laughs> they spent it on a vacation. It was like 14 grand. But because of the home inspector, I think it was Dave Drury, I think, did it. He's still around? No. No? That's too bad. Anyway, <laughs> the home inspector told me about it. I was able to negotiate a credit for that when we bought that house, among some other things. So, But that happens, too. Sometimes people, they, they get the settlement for the hail damage for a new roof, and they just, well, it's not leaking, so they spend it on something else. It's, you can do that. Of course, you should, you know, disclose that when, I guess, you know, you sell it. So here's typical hail hits. This is what it looks like. And it's there's a certain number of hits, I think, per three foot square area or something that the adjusters use for determination of whether the roof needs to be replaced or not. So that's typical hail damage, what it looks like. Here's some more. You can see that the hail hits knock the, the, uh, the granules right off. Here's a Hail hit right there. There's a close up. Whoops, come on, go back, go back. I'm going too fast with the buttons here. There we go. That's a hail hit. There's another one. You can see it just, it blows off the ceramic granules and exposes the asphalt to the sun. So it's gonna beat up a hole in it much faster now. So the roof is pretty much, you know, not gonna meet it's expected useful life. Fastener defects. <clears throat> now, I, I'm typically not lifting shingles, but if I can see the fastener, if I can see them, that's usually wrong. So these are kind of splattered you know, all over. Incorrect location. Now, how about this? Couple things here. I understand the diverter because the front door is right here. And for some reason they got this like four or five foot wide overhang and the gutter is on both sides of it and there's no gutter at the overhang. So they put a diverter up there, which is gonna catch all the junk from the trees because there's trees all over around this house which is gonna cause premature wear and slow down the flow of water off the roof. So what do you think there? Put a gutter in and get rid of the diverter? You know, go around it? What do you think? The water is probably just gonna overshoot that diverter. <clears throat> it's too, it's not high enough, it doesn't appear. Yeah, maybe. At least it stops some of it, maybe. I, I don't know. I just think it could be improved. And the diverter is probably is going to slow down the debris going off the roof. It's going to catch debris. A lot of times there's a bunch of pine needles and junk behind them and they're stuck there. So I don't like diverters. They tend to hang up a bunch of bunch of junk. So are you going to mow the roof? <laughs> power wash it. There you go. That's what this roof needs, a power wash. Roundup, <clears throat> you know, that might work. Roundup might do it. So on this one, that moss, that's moss. That's not just lichen, that's that's moss on the roof. Is so thick that I can only see about 25% of the roof. So hidden damage may exist. And there's really no fix in this. The homeowner said, you know, how do I get that off of there? Replace the roof. <laughs> how, how, what, do you, what are you gonna do with it? Well, yeah, you want to get it more sun. Obviously, it's it's shaded all the time. Yeah, burn it off. Reclassified as an organic roof. I don't know. You know, obviously, you want to 
you know, you need to get some sun. This needs to dry out, this roof. It's got too much moisture and there's a lot of food on the roof from the tree debris falling on the roof and it hangs up, which is what's given the moss something to eat while it's up there. A comment? Yeah, you could use the zinc strips or copper cap was just brought up uh, up near the peak, which could prevent this. Although installing it now is probably too late to get rid of it. You know, somebody, some people were saying power wash, some were, you know, talk, I know, don't power wash a roof ever for any reason. Or, um, you know, go up there, you know, and scrape it off. You know, I would just replace the roof is gonna be the best way. You, know, you, you could wait maybe, but it might leak. There's a high probability of leakage because this material is gonna cause it to not last as long as it normally would. This is gonna reduce the life expectancy of that roof. <clears throat> oh, shingle course offsetting. Let's look at a picture. Nice roof, <laughs> nice roof. So unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, this now forces the water into that long keyway now becomes a big gutter. So it's gonna, it's not gonna last the normal life expectancy. There should be at least, you know, every other course, there should be an offset. Never seen that. Never. Well, you've seen it now. <laughs> this, was a, this was a weekend job, homeowner. You know, this is over the front porch. They were very proud of it, but apparently didn't read the bundle. The instructions are right on the bundle, as we know, and they didn't read it. Okay, some of my favorite details. Kick outs. They're missing all the time. So when you have a, a rake, you know, a sloped roof to wall condition at the bottom, we got a couple things going on here. The shingles are overhanging too much, should be maximum three quarter inch overhang of the sheathing. There probably isn't any drip edge, but I can't see without lifting it up. And I don't see a kick out. Kick out flashing is important. Now, the water that runs down up here, some is gonna go behind the siding. It might be a lot, I don't know. So I would expect some damage inside the wall. What do you think? Could be, I mean, I have to warn my client that there could be damage inside the wall that we can't see. And there may be no evidence. There may be no discoloration inside or outside. But there still could be some damage because we know some water's going inside the wall. It's definitely getting in there. How about that flashing? Nice job. Wrong color cock, yeah. And these neoprene ones wear out pretty fast. And from the side, if you're looking at it from the edge, it might look like it's okay. You almost have to get up there or, or help you to know, hold the camera over top of it to pick up this defect. Because if you're looking at it you know, lateral from the side, it might look like it's okay. But these wear out pretty quick. And there's, uh, there's actually a, a device to fix that, that slides over. Another yeah. Permaboot. Permaboot, whatever, yeah. That appear they they work fine. Okay, this is a roof to wall condition, but shed condition, not slope. So shed roof to wall condition. And you can see right here, that's a pretty big hole behind the siding. Now you, you don't really need a kick out there because this is horizontal, it's not slope, but that's still a pretty big hole. Going to, yeah, now rain doesn't always come down straight. Driving rain is gonna get behind the siding here. So that should be filled with something, right? You don't want holes in your siding. So it should be filled with something. 
Here's another one. Look at it. They got here's a little caught turd right there. Just a little little turd of caught. But then the, the hole is like an inch and a half above it. So when it's raining and maybe coming sideways, water is going in behind the siding. Now, if you're lucky, we've got proper weather, you know, WRB, we got proper weather resistant barrier behind the siding and the weep works at the bottom where water gets out, hopefully. But you really want to try to prevent the water from getting in in the first place. So that should be filled with something. Maybe some Vulcan polyurethane caulk or you know, whatever. Just not left open. So these are important to look at these areas. Any roof to wall condition, whether it be slope or shed, 90% <clears throat> chance there's something wrong. So I look at these closely. Slope of the roof. Here's the patio cover with the asphalt shingles, less than 212 slope. So less than 212 is always wrong because remember we're allowed to go, what? 412 to 212 should have what? 100% membrane. 100% membrane, Bob. Um, there's also a transition missing from the flat to the slope. Yep. So no transition here. There should be some kind of like a mod bit material there or, or metal. Metal. Yeah. Plus what here. If there is a rubber membrane underneath that flat. What's that? What if there is a rubber membrane? Or snow you know, guard, if there's a rubber membrane guard. under it, I don't care what you put over top of it because the membrane is the roof. This becomes decorative, basically. But I don't know what's there. Plus it's damaged. We got pieces missing. And you know they're fighting a leak right here. With that, with that mastic. People don't just put mastic on the roof just for, hey, let's go up on the roof and put mastic up there for Saturday, you know, entertainment. That probably is not happening. All right. Here's another one. Now, this one's a lot prettier, but it's still wrong. Too low of a slope for the material. So make sure you report that. It is definitely wrong. And that was a, like a patio room or three season room, whatever you guys want to call it. Prior repairs. I always report prior repairs. Now this one, there's so much prior repair, I'm thinking, you know, that roof's at the end of its useful life. Look at the number of repairs and then look at the shingles. It's old. Now that roof is in need of replacement. Now they're kind of they're limping it along with these repairs. And there were others on the back side. There were like 10 different repairs. Probably a bundle of shingles. You might as well just replace it. But of course, that does cost more. So this one, you know, expect that roof to require replacement. Matter of fact, I'd recommend you replace this roof now before it leaks. I think he is replacing it just a little bit at a time. A little piece at a time, yeah. sure. Yeah. I had a wood shake roof like that on a house like 30 years ago. I replaced a little bit at a time. As the shakes wore out, I stuck a new one up in there. <clears throat> All right. In summary, make sure that you're safe. Be careful on the roof. I used to go climb just about everything. But, you know, I'm telling you, I, how many are reading... See, inspectors fall off roofs a lot, too much. So be careful, please. It's never never good. I don't bounce as well as I used to. I don't think I even bounce anymore. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm too heavy to bounce anymore. <laughs> too, I'm living good, though. <laughs> All right. So use your experience, your judgment, you know, as you as you... A lot of times you don't even have to go on the roof. I'd encourage you to look in the attic first because many times once you look at the attic, you don't even have to go on the roof. Yep. Actually, we're going to be done a little bit early. So look for defective materials. Look for defects in the roof. 
look for abnormal wear, anything that's out of the ordinary. Roof should always be kind of symmetrical. And you're looking, you're scanning them kind of like roof, roof uh, uh, rafters. And you're looking for some, uh, something different. Why is that different? And that's when we go over and we look at it. For um, long term, I tell my clients, when you're driving home, just look up. And you look over your glasses. Yeah. If you can see anything, it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, if you see a contrast, it's wrong. Yeah. If it's not symmetrical, there's there's probably something wrong. And then resources, I'd recommend ARMA, Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association. Uh, secondary is the National Roofing Contractors Association, NRCA. Does anybody have any of their materials, their books? Expensive. And their details are like aspirational. But it's still good material. All right. All right. I'm Alec with the Crack Man Foundation Repair. I specialize in uh, poured concrete foundations. Um, as the name implies, crack injection of poured concrete foundation walls. I can either inject with epoxy or urethane. 95% of the injections are urethane nowadays because it stops point. the water, remains flexible. Uh, life of structure warranty against man. it ever leaking again. Uh, the warranty is also uh, fully transferable. I also uh, inject around water line penetrations, sewer line penetrations. Yep. Same warranty applies to that to stop water intrusion. Uh, I do uh, carbon fiber uh, reinforcement as necessary. Also carbon fiber staple. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as cinder block, I can repoint cinder block if it comes up, um, if it's an issue. Um, and also exterior cosmetic repairs in concrete, brick, and block. Uh, any questions? Yes, free estimates from photos. Uh, if it's something crazy uh, and I'm in the area, I, I can stop in and take a look at it, but about 95% of them are over the phone or you know, with texted photos, uh, free estimates.